Okay, so uh, ooh, where we left off, uh, all right, what have we been doing? Well, we've designed our speaker, we have uh, completed a working drawing, and uh, we are now going to render it. Okay, so to render simply means to add texture, to add color, uh, to make it look more realistic. Uh, what I've done um, is I've created a speaker, so we'll go over how to copy stuff, how to position stuff, but because this is quite visible and you, you sort of remember that that was black in the middle and that was uh, a metal-ish, gold, uh, brassy colour, um, I'm going to show you how to add the colours to it and we'll start with using this speaker. So the first thing to do is check that that uh, job status, which is the clock next to your name, doesn't have any numbers. Uh, if it has any numbers, you've got to click that and restart, okay? Because otherwise, it's not going to download the uh, textures and color palette. Okay, so what I did there is I just went from wherever I was to render. So if I was in drawing, click render. If I'm in design, click render. So this is the render um, area now. We don't need any of our sketches on anymore. We don't need our construction on. And we can actually move that around now. Everything here is actually is normally set to be mild steel. So everything you have at the moment will be mild steel. Okay, let's start adding these uh, textures in. So the first thing we do is go to the color wheel, click that, and that will appear there. Okay, uh, we're going to scroll down until we find the materials we want. Uh, so if I said, uh, let's, uh, as I said, we're going to start with this speaker. So that was paper. So let's go leather and cloth. Um, we'll go cloth. Now you see the fabric generic has no arrow next to it, which means I can simply drag that straight over. Okay. Now if I look at that, you can see that it's woven. It's all right. If I want to change the color, I can double click, drag that down, change the color like that. If I don't like the scale of this I can click advance uh, sorry don't need to click advance I can change the scale here as you can see that changes the the pattern there or I can add a different color so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the black fabric now you can see that little arrow that means that it's not on your computer you need to download that and the only way you're going to download that is if that job status is clear. So let's drag that in. Um, I think that's better. It doesn't need to be uh, too um, too visible because it is going to be, for mine, it is going to be at the back of the tube. So this is all right. Okay, now the back is actually metal. You're not going to see the metal. But for this, I've by accident made this a, a whole body, okay, which means that this fabric is going to be the same material as this fabric here, which is ridiculous because that is supposed to be a magnet. So let's close that and then I'll show you how we can get over that without having to change everything. Uh, that is a metal and it's an iron and we're going to say it's cast iron. Okay. Now if I drag that over, you can see everything's highlighted and that is going to change the front, which is wrong. Okay. So Let's get that back to the fabric and here you can see bodies and components or faces I'm having a bit of mouse lag at the moment so we click faces and now I can drag my iron straight over it okay so that's polished that's cast cast has a sort of a texture on that I don't really want that so let's just go iron and polished and leave that there okay now the next one uh, let's find see if we can get it I think it's palladium satin palladium and this is a separate body so I'm gonna make sure that body components and I'm gonna click that there okay and I think that's all right it's not as marked as it could have been so let's double click that give it a bit more yellowishness there you go looking a bit more like brass as well and we're going to increase that roughness so that it doesn't reflect as much. Now I can go to advanced, 
and probably add my own colours, textures in there as well if you're an advanced user. I'm not. Okay, uh, these two bodies, right click, come on. Right, so I did say I was having some mouse lag here. Let's see if we can do it again. out right right click move copy and we're just going to oh sorry we are going to click those right click move copy remember on the other side we create the copy and then we drag that second one into place remembering to always use the view cube wherever possible to make sure we are lining up now I can't see inside that so I can change the visual style, the visual, the visual style. Uh, we can go to hidden edges, so that shows me there. Or one thing I like to do when I've got a lot of lag is go to wireframe. Wireframe gets rid of all the colours. It should speed things up a bit. Okay, so that one's in place, and I'm going to move that one there. Move copy. No, yeah, move and drag that in. Now the lag I am suffering, I believe, is actually fusion, so you might get this on the update. You update, by the way, using that job status. Okay, so everything's in place. I'm going back to render now, and you can actually see that I've copied the render and the model, okay? All right, well, the outside of that was going to be MDF, so let's make that MDF. Now, obviously, if you wanted to paint this, if you wanted to make it out of uh, aluminium, plastic, some people are talking about making it out of concrete, of course, you are quite welcome to choose that because you can choose anything in this. Let's choose an unfinished MDF board. Again, we're going to have to download that because that's got the arrow. And I'm just going to place that on there. Now, that's actually quite good there. That looks okay. The scale's correct. Sometimes it's a bit blurred, and that simply means you've zoomed it into your scale too much. Again, you don't like the scale, you click that, that's at 50, and you can come out. That's the blurred one I was talking about. That looks quite realistic. I quite like the effect of 50. Um, you can also change the rotation if you're making it out of solid uh, natural wood. Okay, and then that one, I'll do MDF. So that entire thing is MDF. Except for, I believe I was going to 3D print those uh, tubes, or I could use the cardboard tubes that were in school. So, why don't we go to miscellaneous? We can make them out of air. I'm not sure how that would work. We can make them out of mirror. If my computer wasn't lagging, it certainly will now, because now, when I actually, because this isn't actually rendered properly either, that will actually give me a rendered, um, rendered reflection. Okay, the next one, decal. So let's say I am done with my appearance and I'm happy with that. And now what I want to do is add some decals to it, so decorations. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a decal. Now a decal is like a transfer, a bit of graphic that we can add onto our speaker or onto any of our designs. Um, and what it does is it hugs the face. So if your face is curved, it will hug that and it will actually curve around with it. Um, if it's a separate body, it will not transfer over. So what I do is I go to decal, and the best type of uh, decal to add is a PNG file. Now, I went to subpng.com, uh, one of those websites, where I could download free PNG files. The difference between a PNG file and a JPEG is a JPEG is a flat image, meaning that if I add this, this is the image that I will get. The PNG file has the um, the alpha removed, so that means if I take this, I'm only going to get the black. I'm not going to get the background, and that's what I want. So here, I've got my. Why is it keep on doing that? All right, let's try and push that in the same place. So that's the JPEG. I don't want the JPEG. I want the upload to my computer. I want 
the PNG and select that face. There's the PNG file. Turn that around. Not sure why it's doing that. And now you can see that that is actually transparent. Now, if I add that somewhere without it glitching too much, I can increase that. That is not happy, but we're going to do it anyway. leave that in the corner there and okay that now if I turn that around you can actually see that that graphic is staying there okay so now funnily enough is actually time to render and what I do is I've got two ways of rendering I can do the in canvas render which uh, takes up your computer's resources and takes a long long time to do um, you'll feel your computer getting very very hot uh, things will start to crash, um, but it's actually uh, you're going to get better, uh, better quality. Or you can use Autodesk's um, servers. Now, if you want to use those, and that means that it doesn't take any of your battery power or uh, CPU power, what you do is you click the teapot. Now, the teapot means that you're going to send this file to their server. They're going to render it, and they're going to send it back to you. So uh, we're going to choose a custom size, choose a nice large one, so 16 by 200 is going to take two credits. Final, um, uh, final quality, so the highest quality they're going to give you, you're going to render that. Now when it's ready, it's going to be in the render gallery. That was the first thing that I minimized when I came to this screen. Okay, uh, that's going to be done and it's going to be of the view that I can see. If I'm going to do an in-canvas render, you can also do that and then screenshot it. But every time I move my screen, it's going to have to re-render the whole thing. So it's probably not the best thing to do unless you've got a PC or you're, you're, you don't need your Mac for a while. Okay. Um, well what we're going to need is we're going to need a really good picture of this render and your working drawing. And they're, they're the things that you're going to submit, um, preferably on the same page. That would be fantastic. Otherwise, on two separate documents. So that will be one working drawing and the render. OK, so let me show you how you can do this. If I go to wireframe and click uh, one and go one there, press OK, get my projected view go here and we've already covered this anyway so I'm not going to spend too long and do that press escape double click this go to this shaded version and that should be your rendered version and if we go one to two that should make it a little bit smaller of course 1.5 make it slightly larger go let's close that and then move it a little bit into the border okay and oh, click that oh, where are we going click that there I am not having a good time at the moment okay leave that there double click that one get that hidden detail showing or remember Double click that one, get that hidden detail showing, close that, double click that one, and don't do that. Add your dimensions. Add your dimensions. And once you've got all those dimensions, and the three views, and the... Rendered version here, I don't want the hidden lines, I just want that one. Then you're good to go. It's a shame you've got the lines. If you can find any other way of doing that, it'd be even better. But this is the sort of thing we want. Now, all you need to do is output that as a PDF, and that will send, give you the file. That file you're going to upload straight to uh, the OLP. Okay. 
if you can keep that like that then your name will automatically be on that okay so that's what you're submitting for the assessment for this project uh, I think that's it <laughs>